Hello, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gatto, part two of sourdough baking. I'm going to show you my equipment that I've got for this part of sourdough baking. I've already done part one about the starter. And so now I'm going to show you my initial bringing together, incorporating the different ingredients. And so there's three ingredients. First, I have a bowl. Next, I have measures. Next, I have a scraper because my bread is so sticky that I prefer to use a scraper to help incorporate everything together. And so the three ingredients, water, which we'll get to in a minute, I use Bob's Mill, Red Mill, Bob's Red Mill, unbleached white all-purpose organic flour and I probably go through almost a bag a week when I'm really going at it and so Bob's Red Mill unbleached white all-purpose organic flour and this is my favorite bread I prefer the white bread I've made the white wheat I prefer the white bread it just has a better flavor it's lower on the glycemic index it's not going to process like regular carbs. Grease in the Netflix episode three has centurions, blue zone, people living into the hundred, a hundred years old, and they eat sourdough bread daily because the yeast totally causes a different effect in your body. You're going to see that this is lower in gluten. It has a lower gluten content because I'm not kneading at all. I'm going to do the initial incorporation of white flour, unbleached organic uh, flour, Bob's Mill, water, and salt. It's just those three ingredients. Oh, you'll love it, Lisa. It's just three ingredients, water, flour, salt. That's it. And it comes out phenomenal. Now, I'm a newbie. I don't do as the regular people do. I don't know why. <laughs> okay, I'm just going by my gut. And so, I'm probably doing things wrong. But you know what? I like how it turns out. And I am super impressed by it. And so is my husband and my son. And so, I'm just going to show you what I do. And so, we got the starter. It's risen. I'm going to do a float test. Good, Roseanne. I'm going to do what's called a float test. Now, remember in video one, I've told you that you need to keep the starter out for 10 days and feed it regularly. The instructions say to put it in the refrigerator, but I don't do that. I just keep it out daily and I feed it daily for 10 days to give it strength so that I can make the sourdough bread. Why? Because you're not kneading. And you're going to see it's real sticky. And so, the flour is going to stick together. It's going to be sticky, sticky. And that's the way I prefer it. I prefer it really sticky. If it is not sticky, I am not crazy about it. I prefer it so sticky that a lot of people will not do it this sticky because it's just sticky. The higher the water content in your bread, the stickier it's going to be. Yes, I do it, uh, Lisa, with regular flour, Bob's Red Mill, all-purpose, unbleached white, organic flour. And again, because it's sourdough, it's going to have less gluten. You're not needing it. And it's going to be lower on the glycemic index to where your body is not going to see it as a carb like other breads, pastas, and all that. And so, I'm just going to gauge what I'm doing because I just like it a stickiness. And if it's not sticky like I like it, I just keep messing with it. And so, I'm just going to give you my recipe. It is not like other people. They do it so different. And they're probably doing more incredible recipes than me. So, look at other people, okay? I'm just sharing what I do that my husband, my son, and I love this. And let me tell you what, and I'll do it tomorrow, because this bread is not going to be able to be baked until tomorrow. It's a 24-hour process. 
when it's done correctly. And so, you'll get to see rich taste. I cut him off when I'm cooking it, toasting it at night. I cut the bread and I give him some of the bread with some butter on it. And there is just nothing more incredible than that fresh bread every day, daily bread. And so, I'm going to put some water in here first because I want you to be able to see it float. And I'm doing what's called the float test. If your starter, which is the yeast, it's the name for the yeast. If your starter sinks, it's not strong enough to make sourdough. And so, you might want to just try to do something else, but maybe not make sourdough bread. That's why you have to wait 10 days when you start a new starter because it takes a while for the bacteria and the fermentation to really make it strong enough to be able to cause the structure to stick together. It is a phenomenal structure. You'll love it. And so I'm going to put probably about one and three quarters cup of water in our one and one quarters cup of water in here. And let's just go from there. I'm just winging it as I do this video. I wing, I don't measure anything. I just don't. I just go by my gut and how sticky it is. And so, I'm not going to use this one because I want to save this one for actually my flour. And I'm just going to start using the half cup right here to do my water in. So, I want it about... 90 degrees, no more than 90 degrees, or even about 75 to 90 degrees. Understand that I'm doing it during the day today, whereas in the summer, I would let it rise all night because you're going to see that this is just the beginning of incorporating the flour. Then the next few hours, about four times, and sometimes I've done it three times, I'm just going to stretch and fold, and it takes less than 10 seconds to do it. And you're going to do it four times in about two to three and a half hours. And then for another eight hours to 12 hours, you're going to let it rise. And so you're talking about 10 to, uh, not 10, yeah, 10 to about 14, 15 hours about this bread process rising. And so, I'm going to measure a half cup. And the reason I do it during the day in the winter time is because it really needs to be a certain heat about room temperature for the bread to rise like I want it to. And in the winter time, we turn our thermostat down to 65. And 65 is a little too cool to let this rise overnight. And so, I'm letting it rise during the day. That's why I get it out so early because I want it to have a good rise on it. So, I'm going to get one and a third cup of water. Let me get it and I'll be right back. Here's a half cup, and if y'all can see, I've got a collection of 1930s to 1960s vintage cookware. I love vintage cookware, and this is just probably half of my collection. I've got twice as much as that. So, I'm going to get another half cup. And then I'm going to get a third of a cup. So that's a half a cup plus a, plus a half a cup is one cup and a third of a cup. And I love this little thing because it's just so super handy. And so I'm going to get a third of a cup. I didn't clean my kitchen because I just wasn't expecting to do this today, but I'm just doing it. So y'all see the real, real. Okay. And so, I've done one and a third cups of water. And so, I'm going to do the float test. Now, a lot of people do a smaller amount of starter than I do. I just do a lot. And I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying it's what I like. 
And so I'm just going to get a tablespoon and I'm going to do probably about a good three tablespoons. And it's floating, floating, float away. We want it floating because that means that it's, it's good. So I'm doing about three good chunks of tablespoon. Now I'm gonna see if I can do this to where I can show you that it's floating. Let me know if you can see that. It's kind of hard to do it, but it is floating if you can see that. And so that's what you want. You want it floating and so, this starter is good. I'm gonna rinse my finger a little bit. This starter, and, I, and you know, it's just messy. It's messy and you just have to clean it as you go. And so, this starter, I'm gonna put back in the refrigerator to, for the evening. And I'll get it back out tomorrow morning and I'll repeat this whole process for tomorrow. Now, this is gonna give you probably about a good small loaf that could feed a family of four to five in a night, in a day. So you can make toast in the morning. You can do a couple of slices at night. And so it's, or you can make a sandwich. We made phenomenal sandwiches for Thanksgiving with leftover turkey. And it was so much better on sourdough bread, let me tell you. And so this is floating. So I'm gonna do just a small, this is not a teaspoon, this is smaller than a teaspoon, and so it's probably about half a teaspoon, and I'm just going to do half a teaspoon of salt, and some people, some people like a lot of salt, but what I read with Eat for Life with the Nutritarian Diet, we don't really need as much salt, and so now I'm going to try, I'm just going to try two and a half cups of flour. Let's just see how it goes, because I want it sticky, and so... Here is the first cup. Let me get it in. So there's cup one. Woo! It's going everywhere. Listen, it's just going to be messy, and there's and that is a okay. This is something you want to get your kids involved in. No age is too is early enough. Let them watch you do it. Let them put their hands in it, and even if they're teenagers, you know, get them to do it. This is two cups. Now I'm gonna do a half a cup, and let's just see how that half a cup does. I'm gonna do a half a cup, and then I'm gonna show you what I do. And so this is almost about half a cup. So I've done two and a half cups of flour. I've done my salt. I've done my water. Now I've got this bowl scraper, and I'll put up in the comments a link to a sourdough bread kit that has this in it and the rattan baskets that I put it in the refrigerator overnight. And so I'm just gonna start, and I'll try to do this a little bit so you can see. I'm just gonna start mixing it like so to incorporate the water and the flour. And I don't need to do it rigorously. You just wanna take your time. This is not anything you wanna rush and you're just incorporating all of that. And then finally, I'll get to a point to where it looks like I need to put my hands in. And so I'm gonna scrape this off and I'm gonna put my hands in it and let you see that. So I'm just scraping this off and you gotta get your hands in this. You just, you just do, that's part of it. So I just try to do that up to the point that I can and then I say, okay, I think I need to mix it by my hands. And so I'm incorporating it, and I can already tell that it's not sticky like I like it. So I'm going to add, let's just say, I'm going to add a, an eighth of a cup of water. So I'm going to add another eighth of a cup of a water. So hold on while I add that eighth of a cup. So here's an eighth of a cup of a water that I've added into it because I want it really sticky. Now let me show you kind of the stickiness. Do you see how sticky it is? 
Look at that. But you see how it's kind of holding its structure and it's not all separating. But I like mine super, super sticky. Now, when I get through, yeah, I think this is about sticky. I even like it a little bit stickier, to be honest. So, I'm just going to put maybe, let's just see. No, I think it's the perfect stickiness. We'll just go with this. This will work. I like it super, super sticky. So, look at that. See how sticky it is? Right now, it's separating, but later on, it won't separate. Oh, good. Yes, Lisa, I love that. I'm writing about this sourdough bread in chapter 4 with the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 13, 33, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven sourdough. And so, see how sticky that is? It is like super sticky. So, I'm just going to get this all off my fingers. I'm telling you, some people don't like it this messy. It doesn't bother me. It's called get water, wash your hands. Okay, I like it super sticky. Most recipes call for about half the water. Almost all the recipes I've seen call forth half the water and it's easier to shape their bread. And I don't know, it's just, I've done it that way and it's just too dense and I like it a little less dense. And so, this is going to be more fluffy. You're going to have that crust that's going to be crunchy. The inside's going to be fluffy and light. Oh, it is phenomenal. Okay, so let me wash my hands. Oh, and before I forget it, uh, and I'm getting, this is my um, little area of my old vintage cookware from the 1930s to the 1960s. Drew Holland, Dansk, eBay, Etsy, Poshmark. There, it's all over the place, okay? So, I've got my towel. So, you can get a tea towel, whatever and put it over the bowl. And so let me just show you how sticky it is again. Like it is super sticky. You see that? And it's supposed to kind of look lumpy when you mix it the first time. It's gonna look like that. So in about 40 minutes to an hour, whenever my schedule permits, I'm gonna come and do the first fold. See, I didn't even need it. Did y'all see that I didn't even need it? I just mixed it together and I'm leaving it alone. This is how you do sourdough bread. And then I'm gonna do a fold that is less than probably five seconds, 10 seconds for about three to four times. And then I'm going to let it rise for the rest of the day until we go to sleep tonight. And then I'll put it in the rattan thing and I'll show you that later. And so you get a towel and you put it over it, and you keep it over it, and then when you get ready to fold it and stretch it, which you'll see in a minute, you'll just leave it there and let it stay on over it, covering it overnight. Just FYI, just a couple of tips. You might not wanna wear long sleeves because you get water on the edge of your cuffs, you get flour on the edge of your sleeves. And although it does come out, it is, <laughs> It is a wrestling match to get this sourdough bread that is getting incorporated out of clothes. So that's why I'm wearing short sleeves so I don't get the water and the dough and the flour on the cuffs of my top. So that's just FYI. So we'll come back later and I'll show you the first fold. I'll see you later.